This episode is sponsored by Simply Safe. Simply Safe is a reliable, award-winning home security system. Even better, there's no contracts. But maybe the best part is how easy it is to set up. You can definitely do it yourself in under an hour. Visit simplysafe.com/babish to learn more. I used to be like you, thinking I could make the city follow my rules. I told off line cutters and movie theater talkers. And for what? Did anyone cheer me or name a sandwich after me that would maybe be turkey pastrami Swiss, Russian dressing, coleslaw, and potato chips? Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to Binging with Babish, where this week we are concluding my unintentional sandwich trilogy with The Liz Lemon from 30 Rock, an inspired spin on the classic Reuben that includes the addition of coleslaw, turkey, and for crunch, potato chips. Now, in the past two weeks, we've made our own baguettes, our own deli meats, our own mayo, our own bread, so this presents us with the interesting opportunity to make our own potato chips. We're gonna start by rinsing and scrubbing three large russet potatoes and begin shaving them into thin slices using a mandolin on its in a setting. We're slicing the potatoes directly into a cool water bath so that they do not discolor. Also, it's gonna help wash off any excess starch. Let the potatoes rinse under cool running water while we bring two quarts of water to a boil spiked with two tablespoons of white vinegar. This method from, you guessed it, J. Kenji Lopez Alt calls for par cooking the potatoes for about three minutes. This is gonna help us get rid of even more starch and leave us with a light blonde fried potato instead of a dark brown one. We're spreading these out on paper towels to let them cool and dry for about 10 minutes. And then they are headed into some 325 degree Fahrenheit vegetable oil, where they're gonna fry for about five to eight minutes, during which time they need to be flipped pretty constantly. I found that these chefy tweezers were the perfect tool for the job. We're gonna fry these until they look just shy of done because they're gonna to continue to darken once they've left the oil. We're then sprinkling them with kosher salt as soon as they hit the paper towel lined rim baking sheet to cool. Otherwise, the salt will not adhere. Rinse and repeat with the remaining taters and there you have it, homemade potato chips, which I would characterize as just a little bit better than the store-bought kind. They taste more potato-y, which I like, but I think I'd rather just pay 99 cents for a 50-gallon barrel of chips. A homemade version of a thing I can always get behind is homemade bread, specifically marble rye. Into the bowl of the stand mixer goes 360 grams of all-purpose flour, 185 grams of rye flour, 45 grams potato flour, 28 grams of dry milk, a teaspoon and a half of onion powder, one tablespoon caraway seeds, two and a quarter teaspoons of kosher salt, two tablespoons of sugar on the other side of the bowl, and two teaspoons instant yeast in this recipe adapted from King Arthur flour. Tiny whisk everybody together and then we're adding 400 grams of room temperature water and 35 grams vegetable oil. Introduce everybody to a dough hook and knead on medium low speed for five to eight minutes. Scraping down the hook as you go if the dough starts to climb it until you have a soft, bouncy, rather sticky dough that clears the sides of the bowl but is stuck to the bottom. We're gonna turn this guy out onto a lightly floured work surface and knead by hand for about one minute just because it feels like the bakerly thing to do. Form into a taut ball and drop into an well-oiled bowl large enough for the dough to double in size. Cover with plastic wrap and let rise at room temperature for one and one half hours, during which time the dough should, as you may have guessed, double in size. Turn it out onto an unfloured work surface and divide in half. This, my friends, is where the marbling begins. Wrap one of the halves in plastic wrap and place the other half in the bowl of our stand mixer, where we are going to mix it with one tablespoon each rye flour and cocoa powder. Don't worry, it's not going to make your bread taste like chocolate, it's just going to darken its color so we can achieve the distinct swirl throughout our loaf. This should take about three minutes. Make sure you scrape down the dough hook so it's getting evenly mixed and retrieve once the cocoa is fully incorporated. Next up on a generously floured work surface, we're gonna to begin to roll out our lighter dough into a rectangle. We want it to be about eight inches tall and roughly the width of whatever loaf pan we're gonna use. Once that is achieved, we're gonna do the exact same thing with our cocoa dough, lay it atop the lighter dough and begin rolling into a loaf. Be sure to roll it up tightly enough that there are no trapped air pockets betwixt the two. Once that's done, we're going to place it seam side down in a well-oiled loaf pan, where it shall undergo the post-penultimate proving process, or the final proof under a loosely tented sheet of oiled plastic wrap. Again, about one and a half hours or until doubled in size. During the last half hour of proving, we've been preheating our oven to 400 degrees Fahrenheit. And now that it's baking time, we're gonna brush the loaf down with one egg beaten together with a tablespoon of water and score the loaf deeply thrice times. We're then gonna do our best to loosely tent the pan with aluminum foil. Then this guy's headed into the oven for 15 minutes at 400. Then we're dropping the temperature to 350 and baking for an additional 20 minutes, uncovering and baking for a final five minutes until you got yourself a picture-perfect loaf that temps between 195 and 205 degrees Fahrenheit. Extract it from the loaf pan and allow it to cool completely on a wire rack at least three hours. Cutting into bread prematurely will ruin its texture, so don't skip this step, no matter how tempting it smells. 
Check out that swirl, slice up some slices, and we're nearly ready for sandwich assembly. Only two things missing. First, a Russian dressing. Into a bowl goes two tablespoons of finely chopped onion, one cup of our homemade mayo, quarter cup of chili sauce, two teaspoons of horseradish, a dash of Worcestershire sauce, and your favorite hot sauce, a pinch of salt, and a little shake of paprika. And there you have it, homemade Russian dressing, anywhere from 100 to 500 times better than anything you can get out of a bottle. Next up, coleslaw. I'm going to finely chop about two cups of green and a half cup of purple cabbage. Peel and finely shred one small carrot. We're going for a sort of rainbow slaw here. Finely chop one small dill pickle, about two tablespoons worth. And then I'm adding one third of one cup of each of our homemade mayo. And sour cream, not a traditional ingredient, but I sure like it. A tablespoon or two of pickle juice, one or two teaspoons of white wine vinegar, a little shake of horseradish, one tablespoon of sugar, a little shake of celery salt, and a few teaspoons of freshly ground black pepper. Season to taste, and there you have it. Homemade coleslaw ranked best in its class by J.D. Power & Associates for years running. A perfect source of both moisture and crunch in our final sandwich, which it's finally time to finalize. I'm going to start by spreading a thin layer of mayo on one side of the bread and toasting it in a frying pan, which is going to give it a delicious crunch and crust. We're arranging these on a wire rack so as to maintain bread integrity, bread integrity, and then starting to stack high with pastrami. Two slices of Swiss on the sandwich topper, then we're placing the coleslaw in the middle of the sandwich between the pastrami and turkey, which I think will help prevent it from squidging out the sides. Top up with a generous dollop of Russian dressing and assemble. And there you have it, the oh my god I almost forgot the potato chips. Ideally I'd want to put these in the middle of the sandwich, but since that train has left the station, we're just going to stack them on top and crunch them down. And there you have it, the Liz Lemon. This truly is a sandwich worth having named after you. Let us examine our third cross section in a row, which is basically just Christmas for Babish, and tuck in. Now I will tell you truthfully that this is maybe the best sandwich I've ever had. Toasting the bread only on the inside of the sandwich brings plenty of crunch without tearing up the roof of your mouth. The potato chips bring lots of crunch and salt, and everything is just delicious. Even if this weren't my actual lunch, it would be a member of the Clean Plate Club. Thanks again to Simply Safe for sponsoring this episode. Simply Safe is a reliable, effective, and award-winning home security system. You can choose which pieces are best for your home, door and window sensors, HD cameras, motion sensors, temperature sensors, glass break sensors, and more. Once you get your equipment, setup is easy and fast. Pick the monitoring plan that works for you with no contracts. The Simply Safe Monitoring Center will call the police if alerted to anything. Visit simplysafe.com slash babish to learn more. The link is in the video description below. Thank you.